Jesus. Good day everyone, especially to our very diligent professor, Dr. Nurisa Malkovia Paris. I am Arlene Kalina Poncha, teacher one of Calaspidas Elementary School, San Fernando District. I am now presenting the Brunner's Constructivist Theory and the main concept of Brunner's, which are an active representation, iconic representation, and symbolic representation. And the objectives are First, to explain the Brunner's Constructivist Theory and to determine the main concept of Brunner's Constructivist Theory. Now, let us know who is the person behind this theory. So, the person behind this theory is Jerome Seymour Brunner. Jerome Seymour Brunner is one of the first proponents of constructivism. By the way, constructivism is an epistemological belief about what knowing is and how one comes to know. A major theme in the theory of Brunner is that learning is an active process in which learners construct new ideas or concepts based upon their current or past knowledge. And now, let us know the main concepts of Brunner. In his research on the cognitive development of children, Jerome Brunner proposed three modes of representation, which are an active representation, which is action-based, iconic representation, image-based, and symbolic representation, which is language-based. These are the ways in which information or knowledge are stored and encoded in memory. In this slide, we can see the learning mode or mode of representation. So, in inactive, learn through movement or action, it is from 0 to 1 year old. In iconic, learn through images or icons from 1 to 6 years old. And in symbolic, learn through abstract symbols from age 7 years and up. In active representation, it occurs first, memorizing information based on action. For example, a baby grabbing on to an object is its muscles memorizing how to hold on to something. So this is muscle memory. And another example is an adult trying to operate a camera. It involves encoding action-based information and storing it in our memory. At the earliest ages, children learn about the world through actions on physical objects and the outcomes of these actions. They are represented in the muscles and involve motor responses or ways to manipulate the environment. And the second stage is called iconic, where learning can be obtained through using models and pictures. So iconic representation, also called pictorial stage or photographic memory. This is where information is stored in the form of images. For example, a child memorizing what a dog is by looking at images of a dog. And another example is an adult memorizing information by using illustrations or diagrams. So this second stage is when learning can be obtained through using models and pictures. So the learner can now use mental images to stand for certain objects or events. So iconic representation allows one to recognize objects when they are changed in minor ways. And the last representation is symbolic. So this is from age 7 and up. Symbolic stage or language-based, sometimes called the abstract stage. So learners has developed the ability to think in abstract terms. So the last stage takes the images from the second stage and represents them using words and symbols. This uses symbol system to encode knowledge. And the most common symbol system are language and mathematical notations. Language is symbolic. The use of words and symbols allows a student to organize information in the mind by relating concepts together. In math symbols, the words and symbols are abstractions. They do not necessarily have a direct connection to information.
For example, a number is a symbol used to describe how many of something there are, but the number in itself has little meaning. Without the understanding of it means for there to be that number of something. Other examples would be variables such as x or y or mathematical symbols such as plus or minus or etc. Finally, language and words are another way to abstractly represent the idea. In the context of math, this could be the use of words such as addition, infinite, the number 3, 2, and etc. Next is classroom applications. It provides study materials, activities, and tools. Examples of these three representations help children learn about dinosaurs. For example, construct a model of a dinosaur. This is inactive. And watch a film about dinosaurs. It is iconic. And consult reference text and discuss findings. So this is symbolic. And for its educational implications, allows students to proceed according to their abilities. Teacher acts as a facilitator in constructing concepts, and learners are encouraged to think logically. Then last, learners are intrinsically motivated because he is learning actively. So it is to facilitate a child's thinking and problem-solving skills which can be transferred to a range of situations. And that would be all about Brunner's constructivist theory and its main concepts. I hope you enjoy and learn something in this discussion. Thank you everyone!